introducing uh, Oscar Robles, who will uh, talk about uh, LACNIC promotes regional technology infrastructure through a blockchain project. Go ahead, Oscar. Thank you, Andre. Yes, uh, indeed. Today I want to talk uh, to you about this project that we are putting together, this initiative that we are uh, discussing with a couple of regional areas. One is a big lab of the uh, IEDB and the other one by Red Clara, the Organization of Advanced Academic Networks in Latin America and the Caribbean. And first of all, um, uh, as um, uh, to start uh, talking about this, I'd like to talk about blockchain. Many of you may have uh, seen, uh, 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 heard about this technology because of cryptocurrency. And uh, it, the, it, it's usually called as uh, the digital ledger technology that is a way of having a centralized manner, the re record of the transactions for activities. And among the strengths of this mechanism is having the uh, computer the, uh, uh, in a decentralized manner, not uh, not as a, the DNS, but also decentralized in the, in the sense that it's not the same institution that has the nodes in different parts of the internet, but in addition, it may be different physical entities or different organizations. For instance, uh, DNS Anycast uh, that you may have used is distributed because in theory it's the same entity, the same institution that has control over all the nodes of, uh, uh, deployed there. In the case of blockchains, what uh, we aim at is to have a range of entities responsible for each of these nodes with a computing capability for the uh, application that is being used for. And as I said initially, this is the infrastructure behind the cryptocurrency. There's any number of a cryptocurrency, about 12,000, they say, and most of them run over the most common blockchains, the best known, the Bitcoin, Vidium, Cardano, Polka, Dogsland, etc. However, all these have the same characteristic, that is, they have a currency uh, tethered to it. And of course, that gives rise to speculation. One of the main strengths that a blockchain has is the possibility that their records may be unchangeable and stay like that. So that is, that is guaranteed that they won't be modified in time. That is one of the greatest strengths, or at least it's one of the strongest promises of the blockchain. And what is it based on? Well, first of all, it's based on the algorithm, on the strength of cryptography, uh, public and pr private keys, and the, and the fact that it is impossible to alter uh, blocks, isolated blocks, because you have to change uh, all the chain. If you are going to change, uh, um, make any changes in uh, the an intermediate block, in an unauthorized change. So the introduction of those nodes and uh, the possibility of distributing, not the, just geographically, but topologically and institutionally, this adds to the strength. And obviously another element of this strength of the blockchains in general, we are not speaking of anyone uh, specific yet, is the algorithm of consensus. It's the process through which uh, all the nodes agree to establish the next uh, block in this chain. So there are different algorithms and the most common is uh, the process of work. Uh, it's a uh, through, and that is why it has so many criticisms because of the amount of power that is used uh, to determine the next block in the chain. There are other algorithms such as proof of stake or proof of authority in centralized networks in where there's an authority. Uh, and so, so those that participate well here uh, with uh, with us uh, with Vince Cerf and Vince Cerf, uh, 
mentioned that he didn't like blockchains much. He wasn't a great fan, he said. And in the interview, he didn't give any further details. But of course, as we are in this project, we want to go a bit further precisely to see what he didn't like about it because why he wasn't such a fan. So we asked him to discuss it. So without further ado, we are going to show you Bint's uh, comments. Go ahead, Bint. Well, they asked me if I am... Um, uh, uh, okay. Hyperbole associated with blockchain. Everybody was running around saying blockchain solves all problems. Uh, we use blockchain at Google uh, for some of our applications. Certificate transparency being a good example of that. And so I'm, I'm not uh, rejecting blockchain ideas out of hand. I will say that I am unpersuaded that anonymous blockchains are particularly attractive. Uh, as, a, as a consumer of services, I would prefer to know who I am depending on. So uh, permissioned blockchains that have identifiable parties strike me as much more uh, acceptable uh, for me than the, uh, the so-called uh, you know, anonymous blockchain. Uh, and of course, I frankly reject out of hand the whole Bitcoin, bit mining, uh, enormous uh, computational load associated with, uh, with earning uh, the right to sign the next block. Uh, there are easier and less, uh, com less computationally intensive ways of deciding who signs the next block. That's especially true if you have a permission blockchain where the parties can decide on uh, what algorithm they're going to use for signing the next block. And, uh, and that does not have to be as competitive as the uh, Bitcoin mining is. So uh, within some boundaries, uh, I actually think uh, blockchain ideas are, are useful. I believe financial transactions uh, among the uh, finance networks can certainly make use of permission blockchains for the uh, management of transactions. Uh, it can be an efficient way of, uh, of having everyone aware of and able to validate transactions. One thing I would warn you about though, is that some transactions need to be kept for very long periods of time. For example, real estate transactions need to be known for hundreds of years. Yep. And so some thought needs to go into the longevity of any of these digital implementations of the equivalent of paper, uh, which does have uh, the ability to last for hundreds of years, and we don't know about digital equivalents yet. Bien, el diagrama de flujo al que se refería. All right. So the flowchart that he mentioned in his initial, uh, uh, at the beginning, he said that at the beginning of. Uh, uh, blockchain life, there were fans that uh, defended blockchain and they said that they could use it for everything. But of course, there were people that weren't such believers and they put together this uh, flowchart. And do I need blockchain? No. So that puts an end uh, to the discussion. However, what Vince says is goes uh, more in detail and he gives further information. I'll explain this now. He mentioned that what he didn't like about blockchains was, first of all, uh, he complained about the public blockchains. Here we see that the public blockchains to your left are the ones that precisely he didn't like much. And what he, he saw a better future to the, to the, um, those that uh, have a central, the, the permissioned blockchains who state who is part of the validating nodes. So, and it's a fact that the part of the consensus algorithm is one of the elements that uh, critics don't like. The proof of work for, for, the, for the amount of power that you need for uh, mining each uh, node and precisely when we speak of network blockchain, uh, permissioned uh, blockchains, the algorithms that are used do not use proof of work, but proof of stake or proof of authority. So precisely the project that we are involved in has those characteristics 
um, uh, that uh, wind surf. And something that doesn't have so much to do with our project, but is important for blockchains. He mentioned how several projects, in this case, he mentioned the financial institutions that may make use of uh, this technology for more immediate transactions. And obviously, without so much cost for those who use these services. For instance, uh, uh, international remittances. It, it's too bad that people have to work such absurd um, uh, uh, fees to send money to their families. So blockchain, now the financial system starts to perceive how these usages may help them solve problems that they've had for a long time and of course there's a huge potential in many other topics especially for the applications that require a historic uh, record of uh, transactions a public record for consultation of all the stakeholders so it is there that there's a big area of opportunity and this is how we evaluated this initiative and that is why we reported a few months ago that we are involved with these uh, entities with BitLab and Red Clara in the blockchain project to promote this technological infrastructure in the region. BitLab has been involved uh, for several years and devoting resources to this initiative and they invited Red Clara and us to be part of the uh, project. We reported something briefly. Briefly, we are in the creation process. It's not official yet. It's off the record, but we are going to uh, uh, let it let you know later on when it's official. So let me tell you some of the reasons why uh, we uh, speak of the BID lab, of the IADB lab. Now, let's explain uh, the rationale for engaging in a project like this. Basically, there are four regions. There may be one more, but these are the most relevant. First of all, because we believe that um, blockchain has a future. They, are, they can transform markets for lives and hopefully for good. And uh, so, and for certain uh, aspects, of uh, some uh, layers of the population, it may make available tools or instruments that so far were only available for those with uh, that were better off. The possibility of decentralizing uh, the uh, um, uh, computation aspects is also important uh, because of the robustness that you can generate centralizing um, the computing and if a network can suffer a significant attack and uh, that uh, their operations are not uh, uh, impaired, that's wonderful. It's a very interesting concept. Another reason was because this will commit to generate a project that is sustainable. In de especulación que tienen todos estos proyectos para que una blockchain pueda ser eh, generate a sustainable project in the region and to make a blockchain sustainable rewards are offered to those who install the nodes those who operate the nodes and in most cases there is a currency associated to this so this generates a whole air of speculation so sometimes the projects are not really sustainable. In this case, the project we are becoming involved in does not consider cryptocurrencies. This is not associated to the speculation of cryptocurrency. And the only reward that those of us who are setting up the node in this network is to have a technological tool or structure to be made available to the community. So that's a very strong motivation to we perceive that we also contribute to this project. We have a big experience of 20 to 20 years creating a community, building rules in a participatory manner with mechanisms of transparency and accountability following rules and procedure for 
the involvement of the community. So we think that these are elements that can be can benefit projects such as these that benefit the project and the region. In the case of our members, based on that initiative, we think that we can bring you closer to this technology as from next year. So once all this is confirmed, when all this, once all this becomes official, we can then launch the project more intensively. So at that stage, we're going to define a sub-chapter in the FRIDA program, which is a program that promotes regional initiatives on different topics. So we're going to create a sub-chapter, which is to favor some projects from the community that exploit the blockchain, that take advantage of the blockchain so that you can generate an application that has to do with the blockchain that we have mentioned so that we can reward or select some of these projects to enhance them through this program. So you will be receiving further news once this has been confirmed, but we wanted to give you some highlights. There are many experts, surely, among those who are following the conference, so you will be able to participate in some of these projects that LACNIC is supporting. Thank you very much. Andrea. We will now have a few minutes for questions. Laura is assisting us with the Q&A questions in the Zoom. Are there any questions in the Zoom that we can relate to Oscar? Hello, Andrea. So far, we don't have any questions in the Q&A. We encourage all those of you who are following us to write your questions in the Q&A box. While we wait, let me tell you that we already have the winner from the social media of the trivia, trivia, the ones who received the best score yesterday and today. So in a couple of minutes, we'll tell you who won this trivia. Laura, are there any questions so far? Yes, we have just received a question from Hernan Mogilevsky. He said, have you considered some form of governance over the infrastructure, on the infrastructure or governance regarding the infrastructure? Well, we haven't considered one single model because precisely that is one of the pending issues that this project will have, namely the off-chain policies for projects such as these. So far, we haven't defined anything because this is not final yet, but precisely it is there that we wish to become involved and contribute to that experience. So that is precisely one of the most relevant points where we not only have the participation of those who benefit from this blockchain, but also the regional community as a whole. Laura, any more questions? No more questions in the Q&A. If there are questions in the chat, please write them in the Q&A box, not in the chat, please. Muy bien. Bien. Esperamos unos minutos más. Acá tenemos una We have another question. Would you involve the organizations who have developed initiatives in blockchain, for example, blockchain chambers in the countries? More than involving them, this would depend on them. One of the elements, one of the relevant elements of the project is who is willing to establish nodes. That is one of the ways to enter. And then who wishes to be part of the association that would be established eventually. Or also who would like to develop apps 
So if you're interested, if they're interested, there should be a mechanism whereby we can count on the participation of serious regional organizations. The rules haven't been defined yet because this is still a very premature stage, but I'm sure that there will be several mechanisms for participating in these organizations. Laura, anything else? One more from an anonymous uh, participant. Please register with your name so that it's not just someone anonymous. Would this blockchain be based on one of the available blockchains that we have today? No, this is a dependent blockchain. The nodes have been established by different regional organizations, and that is, is the intention. But the protocol is a public, a public protocol, hyperledger, and it's openly defined protocol, which makes it very robust because different people participate in this protocol. And if I'm not mistaken, this is the same blockchain that is used for the European Union. This is something that I can confirm later on. If you have more questions, send an email to oscar at lacnic.net and I can provide further technical details on this protocol. Laura, back to you. Thank you, Oscar. Andrea, no more questions so far. Bien, como dijo Oscar, los invitamos a que... Very well, like Oscar was saying, please visit LACNIC's website. And thank you, Oscar, for your presentation. Thank you.